It Comes at Night has recently been a truly divisive movie among filmgoers. People like myself really enjoyed and appreciated this film for its excellent performances and realistic portrayal of the human condition in the state of nature. Others were extremely misled by the marketing and were let down by this movie due to its slow pace, abrupt ending, and lack of closure in regards to certain events that occurred. But more specifically, people were let down by not receiving an answer to what exactly it is that comes at night. Ambiguity played a huge part in this film and I was somebody who really appreciated that aspect of this film. I feel like most people who enjoyed this film understood that this film's goal was to realistically portray the human condition when they find themselves in a state of desperation. The film does this flawlessly, and I think people who dislike this film can at least agree that this aspect of the film was exceptionally captured and thought-provoking. So this video welcomes filmgoers from both sides of the spectrum as I attempt to explain and give closure to the ambiguities that the film left us with. So before I start diving into this video, of course this is going to be a spoiler-filled video. So if you haven't seen the film yet and you want to hear my spoiler free review, I left a link down in the description box below. Okay, so there are a number of things that occur in this movie that are left ambiguous without answers. Like, when did the intruding family get sick? What was the dog barking at in the woods? What or who killed the dog? Why did the film hint that Will was lying about having a biological brother? How did the child end up in the other room? What was up with Travis's dreams? And what is it that comes at night? I guess I should start by trying to answer this big question, because I feel like all of the other answers will start falling into place once I give you my answer for this. I'll try to make this as fluid as I possibly can. So this virus seems to be an incredibly slow moving disease. It definitely seems like it would take weeks or perhaps even months for the virus to completely take over your body. In the later stages of the sickness, the virus causes people to subconsciously sleepwalk at night as the virus attempts to transfer itself to another individual while they're sleeping. I think this is something apparent because when the families first discover that the child was out of bed, they all become intensely apprehensive and reserved at this very notion. Joel Edgerton's character, Paul, immediately asks if their son sleepwalks, which puts everybody at the table on edge. And it's after that point that Paul decides to separate themselves from the other family and essentially quarantine them. The sleepwalking virus would also explain why the film decided to focus so much on Travis's dream sequences. Most of those dream sequences probably weren't dream sequences. They were perhaps sleepwalking sequences of what Travis was seeing while he was sleepwalking. Maybe not all of them, but most of them. Such as a scene where he's walking close to the other family's door and he can hear them having sex. But I'm sure you're wondering, what the hell was up with the sleepwalking dream sequence where Kim comes in, climbs on top of Travis, and slowly regurgitates the black tar into his mouth? I'm not 100% certain of whether or not it actually happened, but I feel like the odds of it being real are much higher, and here's why. Remember when the film hinted that Will might be lying about him having a biological brother? Well, that's because he was lying. I mean, just think about it. If you are caught by someone else in a world where there's a viral apocalyptic outbreak, and he's holding a gun to your head and asks you if you're sick, what are you gonna say? Yes? Even if you were sick, nobody would answer that question honestly if they know it will cost them their life. Him and maybe his whole family were sick, but he wanted to do everything that he possibly could do for his family's well-being, regardless of possible future consequences, because they were sick after all anyway. But why would he lie specifically about him having a biological brother that died? Well, if you're trying to get another family man to help you and your family, the best thing that you could say to morally convince him to help you is if you mentioned that you had a death in the family. It forces somebody to think more with their heart rather than their brain. But remember, Paul always remained cautious of the newcoming family. He warned his son Travis a few times to remain skeptical and cautious around them. Which is why Paul intentionally brought out the liquor in attempts to get Will comfortable in order to see if he would slip up or not. And it worked because that's when he found out that Will was lying about having a biological brother. So I think Will and his family were sick, which is also why I think the scene where Will's wife, Kim, was regurgitating black tar into Travis's mouth was real. And also something that's noteworthy is the fact that after the incident happened, Travis goes into the kitchen and finds Kim sitting there awake. Which probably means that she was woken up by her sleepwalking in the same way that Travis was woken up by his sleepwalking. But I also think that Travis was sick the whole time before the family even got there. Because one, he was already having sleepwalking experiences before they even showed up. And two, there's a subtle detail where you can see an empty bed next to Travis. This means that he slept right next to where his sick grandpa slept, so the odds of him not contracting the virus would be pretty slim. 
His family was probably in denial and being dishonest about that likelihood the entire time and never brought it up just for the sake of retaining hope and peace. Okay, so let's move on to the other unanswered questions. What was the dog barking at? And what killed the dog? My answer to this question might seem a little far-fetched at first, but just hear me out. The virus, through a slow, torturous period of time, embodies a victim and turns them into these vicious black-eyed creatures that prey upon living things. I'm making this claim because for one, in the beginning scene where we see the sick grandpa who has the virus, notice that Paul both shot and burned him. I guess some people could say that he only shot him to put him out of his misery, but going to the extent of setting his body on fire seems a bit much. It seems that the family may be partially aware of the kind of danger that the body could potentially have on them. And also, we could see that the virus turns the victim's eyes completely black, which would scientifically mean that they are nocturnal creatures who can see much more effectively at night. So the dog was probably barking at an infected human that was nearby because his senses are much stronger than a human's. And unfortunately, the dog ends up coming back at night all chewed up, torn apart, and infected by one of the black-eyed infected humans. So what comes at night could mean two things. It could be the sleepwalkers who come into your room while you're sleeping and attempt to regurgitate the virus into your system, or it could be the result of the virus that turns you into a ravenous black-eyed creature and preys on the living during the night because the virus is just wired that way. So all in all, I thought this was an intense, gut-wrenching film that really dives deep in the human condition and what humans are forced to do in times of desperation. I hope this was a satisfying enough interpretation of this aspect of the film. I'm sure there are other interpretations that might make more sense, but so far, this is the one I came up with that seems more consistent with the film's imagery and story. If anybody has any other interpretations they would like to share, or if you found errors with mine, please feel free to comment below and let me and everyone else know. Thank you so much for checking out my explanatory interpretation for It Comes at Night. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it amongst your friends. And don't forget to subscribe to the Misfit Pond channel to be updated on more film-related content.